Good morning. How are you guys? Um, thank you for being here. I am really excited to be in Bilbao. And my bag made it, so that's also good. I, I have clean clothes. Uh, there was a couple of questions there whether uh, I was going to show up in sweatpants today. So I'm excited to be presentable. Um, welcome to the first. Uh, Linux Foundation Europe Member Summit. Are you, how are you guys feeling today? I am really excited. Uh, I, I'm based in California, but you probably can hear my Italian accent. So I'm, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to connect with the European community. And uh, I want to share with you today a little bit of what we've done last year and give you some of the some previews of some of the announcements coming this week. Um, I have to say, when we started just a little over a year ago, uh, 369 days to be specific, um, you know, we uh, tried to learn a lot uh, in the last year. And I think we did a lot. As I was putting together the presentation, I was like, wow, I I actually didn't think we were able to uh, get so much done in a year. Uh, but I think this is the first time that we get to meet in person. Uh, this is the first time that you know, we'd love to get your input into how we move forward. Um, so I hope you feel excited. I definitely am excited, a little nervous. Um, I was going to do this in Spanish, but I figured that probably uh, it's more accessible if we do this in English. I was going to practice a joke today for tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, uh, introducing the Open Source Summit, um, but I guess, I guess I'm not going to use you as, as guinea pigs. So. Um, so just quickly, I want to go through, um, for those of you, most of you are, are Linux Foundation Europe members. Uh, some of you don't, don't uh, know us, and so I want to show you a little bit what we've done this year and how you can uh, participate, and then looking forward to, to what's happening this week. So for those of you who don't know what LF Europe is, we launched last year. It is a neutral entity based in Brussels, uh, uh, fully incorporated in Europe, that allows us to uh, host what we refer to as Europe strong projects. Uh, what does that mean? Um, it means they are either highly aligned with European priorities, they have a strong uh, representation from European members. Um, but what we don't want to create is, is sort of another element of fragmentation, what we're seeing already being, uh, you know, sometimes driven by geopolitics, by techno nationalism, the, the potentially uh, harmful. Uh, sort of fragmentation of the open source, global open source community. So think about the Linux Foundation Europe as an entry point to the global Linux Foundation Federation. Um, this is not a separate uh, sort of silo uh, that we want to create here. Um, across all the different constituents in Europe, like the Linux Foundation does on a global basis, uh, we want to continue educating uh, both industries, uh, the public sector, and of course, uh, sort of the long tail of the community uh, as to what's the strategic value of open source. I, for those of you who don't know, I, my second hat is Finos, uh, uh, FinTech Open Source Foundation. So I've had a lot of experience working with sort of industries that are not sort of as open source friendly as uh, you'd think. Uh, and so it always starts from the business value. It's a very different approach to open source. As much as I sort of come from the uh, you know, full disclosure, I had dreadlocks when I was a kid, so I come from the Apache grassroots type community, uh, but I've really had to sort of change my approach to open source when it comes to bringing sort of new industries in the fold. Um, and of course, last but not least, engagement with the local community. We spent the last year creating channels and avenues to be more connected with the European community, culminating today in our first uh, Linux Foundation Europe Member Summit. Um, I always love a pretty logo slide, uh, and I want to thank you. Uh, in, again, a year, we have reached 145 participants. You can call it members, uh, uh, but for LF Europe, we refer to them as participants. Um, Again, this wouldn't have been possible without you, and so I truly appreciate 
uh, having so many supporters behind Linux Foundation Europe, I think it's a strong validation of uh, um, you know, the need for uh, this organization in the European market. And I want to be clear, this is not just about the EU, this is about Europe at large. Uh, uh, we think that despite, again, some geopolitical aspects, there are common priorities uh, in this region. And again, we don't want to create even further sort of uh, fragmentation in the ecosystem. On the basis of the support of, of these 140 members, over the last year, we launched four new projects. I um, hope to see another 40 next year. Um, but I think each of these projects in and of its own embodies um, the different types of, of, of sort of archetypes of projects that we see coming into Linux Foundation Europe. Um, Today, you're going to have project tables out there. Uh, uh, one of the ways we try to elevate the projects in LF Europe is providing them with uh, the opportunity to, to be here and, and connect with all of you. Um, but quickly, you know, I think each one of them has sort of a unique feature. Uh, Open Wallet, uh, many of you might know it. Today, they're actually hosting a mini summit, so we're sort of competing with them. Uh, and they're going to have some big announcements. But it's truly a global initiative, very much aligned with uh, IDAS2, the uh, uh, European ID uh, um, regulation. And it has participation from the public sector, from the private sector. They are setting up a government advisory council. So truly, sort of this idea of bringing all the constituents together um, in alignment with, again, a global project, but it's very aligned with priorities that are very European. Silva. Uh, again, I am biased. I have a soft spot for uh, vertical industries collaboration as I work a lot in, in finance. Uh, Silva was our second project announced uh, among some of the largest telco uh, providers and operators and uh, mobile operators in Europe. Um, Rise shows us this is not just about open source, but of course it's open hardware, despite this being the sort of software ecosystem around uh, Risk V again, shows the different means of collaboration that we can host in the Linux Foundation and Linux Foundation Europe. Open source, open data, open standards, open hardware. And then last but not least, uh, quite excited. This was our last announcement a couple of weeks ago. Servo, uh, uh, it's a web engine based in Rust. Uh, about 20,000 stars. So pretty, pretty interesting project in GitHub that moved actually from Linux Foundation to Linux Foundation Europe. And we hope to be able to uh, lift and grow, continue to grow the community. So quite diverse set of projects. And again, my hope is that today you'll learn how you can bring more projects to LF Europe and what is you know, the value uh, for you to, to sort of build on the open governance that is provided by LF and LF Europe. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail of every single sort of highlight here, but you know, we spent the first year, I think the, the, the first order of business for me was to learn, and uh, learn through direct connection, uh, you know, uh, sort of strengthen local presence in events across Europe. Um, and thanks to the fantastic work, I don't know where Hillary is, but uh, back there, the Linux Foundation research uh, has been so supportive of our effort and really helped us produce research, uh, which, by the way, we're going to unveil new research this week. Uh, but it has helped us uh, sort of drive our decisions based on data. Uh, the Europe Spotlight 2022 that was launched contextually to LF Europe in, in last September uh, truly gave us some insights as to where we should put our focus. Uh, and then last but not least, of course, we try to be sort of visible in the press, visible in the messaging, um, to continue to lift up, again, the projects that are uh, coming under LF Europe. Um, I also want to send a shout out to our uh, Linux Foundation Europe Advisory Board. In April, uh, we set this up. It's a pretty large board, um, but that's truly what we were going for. We need uh, the guidance of uh, uh, folks in Europe, 
uh, from, I think if I remember correctly, we have over 10 countries represented, very much different industries, uh, large and small technology firms, vertical organizations, non-profits, uh, individual contributors. So it truly tries to, uh, um, you know, create a, a, a sounding board, a validation board for where we should put our focus. And I'm actually we're going to have a meeting later in the, in the week uh, where uh, I hope based on today and on what happens at the member summit, at the sort of open source summit, uh, we'll be able to really set the focus for 2024 and beyond. Um, last but not least, uh, today, should take time, if possible, to connect with the Linux Foundation Europe team. We made uh, a substantial investment in the local team. Uh, um, uh, again, besides me and Hillary, which are sort of divided across sort of Linux Foundation and Linux Foundation Europe, uh, we have Alexandra, which is now here. She's still based in California. Uh, uh, she sends her best, your, her best. Uh, she runs member success for us. We have Rima, uh, who uh, uh, helps us grow. Uh, uh, as a VP of strategic growth, Mirko, back there, uh, who uh, 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 leads the efforts to bring in new projects in the Linux Foundation, has been in Linux Foundation Europe, and it's been so functional and something that we're going to discuss later. Uh, um, our policy efforts in in region, uh, and then Kalian on the research side, and Susan. Please, if you see her there, thank her because she's really helped us on the day by day to really uh, make this event happen and really our marketing operations across uh, throughout the year. I know I'm going to go long, so I'll plow through. Um, the idea is to support all constituencies' uh, outcomes. Uh, the three areas that we learned uh, really have, you know, we have hypothesized uh, early in the year, and uh, we think uh, uh, we'll continue to focus on that are very uh, sort of uh, Europe-specific uh, are really three areas. Uh, we engaged uh, much more with the public sector that we've been able to do in previous years, especially on the European side of the house. Through a couple of things, um, you know, we became a supporter of Open Forum Europe. If you guys are not uh, uh, familiar with them, uh, they, they are a think tank based in Brussels, advocating for open technologies. It's been really helpful. I see a couple of folks here uh, uh, from the team. It's been helpful to really rally up not only our efforts, but the open source community when it comes to interfacing with Brussels. We've applied for multiple grants, and I would say we had a 66% win rate. So. Uh, um, Hopefully, we can get that to 100%, and we can get it to uh, uh, you know, becoming leading uh, uh, consortia uh, rather than sort of participating to it. That's where we'd love your help. Um, and we are starting to form governance structures that could uh, allow the government to have a much higher sort of active participation in our projects. Open Wallet is in the process of forming a government advisory council. Um, some of you. Uh, who may, may be familiar with ICANN, uh, that's what it's modeled around. Um, now, the second, and again, this is where maybe I'm biased, but you know, there's simply not as much big tech in Europe as in California. And so we think vertical indices is really the next level. We're going to hear later from Rima, uh, a panel of our members uh, across telco, uh, um, uh, energy, finance, and automotive, as every industry undergoes the digital transformation, open source is a key pillar for it. And so I think this is a great area of development for us in Europe. Um, not only projects that are in Europe, you know, like Silva, but also, you know, projects that are in LF and we can exp expand and develop uh, further in Europe, like Finos, Agstack, you're going to hear about that today. Uh, and then finally, uh, social impact. And you know, I think we all agree that open source, besides being a way of not reinventing the wheel, can actually drive uh, uh, social outcomes. Um, we're going to hear, the, I'm super excited about the keynote just after me, around Zephyr and what it's done with open collar to uh, uh, protect rhinos and poaching, uh, sort of against poaching. <laughs> um, but research is also helping us. We just released the sustainability report. 
as well as, of course, we have uh, OS Climate, our uh, initiative around climate. So again, this is, we think, are the three uh, dimension that we've tried to develop this year. But today, we'd love to hear your feedback and what else should we be doing? What else should we be focusing on next year? Um, quick plug for AgStack. Uh, Woo! <laughs> we, we uh, besides having a table, if you guys don't know, Sumer is the executive director of Agstech. Uh, Agstech is really working hard in, uh, uh, you know, globally, but partnering with leading institutions uh, on the EU Green Deal. We're actually, one of the grants that we, that we won uh, uh, through sort of the Horizon program is actually on, on um, Agstech. So make sure you connect with uh, Sumer. Uh, at the table later, and I'm, I'm really glad we were able to, to bring this project here, one that is very, very close to my heart. Now, let's see how am I doing in time. Oof. Yeah, exactly. Should probably go a little quicker. Um, couple of announcements uh, throughout the week. Um, we are announcing the 2023 version of our uh, European Spotlight Report. Not gonna spoil it. Uh, if you're looking at the QR code, it's not going to work until tomorrow. Um, uh, but, you know, take a picture and then you can scan it tomorrow. Uh, but this is going to give us a um, uh, really year-on-year -year, uh, uh, view of how open source is growing in Europe. Uh, and we have a fantastic panel on Thursday. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, during my keynotes throughout the week. I'm actually going to fill some big shoes uh, by, by emceeing Open Source Summit throughout the week. So I'm going to plug here and there nuggets from this report. Um, but what I can tell you already is that, like we've seen in 2022, um, 2023 confirmed the same thing. There is a lot of potential for open source in the public sector, um, but the public sector is sort of still lagging in sort of truly and fully taking advantage of open source to address you know, elements like uh, digital sovereignty or you know, social change and some of the sort of higher order challenges that we think open source can, can help with. <clears throat> and one way that this has pretty, become pretty clear to us um, that there is a bit of a disconnect between sort of, especially on the EU side, the goals of, of uh, digital sovereignty and sort of how this is being implemented on the ground is the Cyber Resilience Act. If you haven't heard about the Cyber Resilience Act, uh, it's certainly a very worthy uh, uh, from a goal standpoint. The EU is trying to bolster uh, cybersecurity uh, and regulating software in many ways. Um, but there are some fundamental misconceptions in there, um, including the fact that this is risking to put liability on open source developers versus sort of the uh, organizations that put software, open source or not, onto the market. So this week, well, while on the other side of the pond, last week, thanks to our friends at OpenSSF, we were at the White House. So I'm seeing a very different approach there. While the EU has not really involved foundations in an active conversation, sort of representatives of the largest open source communities. On the other side, foundations are sort of a first class citizen of, of this conversation. And trust me, as an Italian, I never had the American dream. I'm just going to be very, very honest here. Uh, so my wife is American. She knows how often I criticize America in so many, so many ways. But I have to say, <laughs> I feel not really happy about the fact that they're doing better at involving foundations uh, than we're doing here in Europe. And so this week, I'm going to have to plow through this because I'm going really long here, uh, we're launching a campaign. Uh, it's not going to be a huge campaign, but we're trying to educate the public and mobilize the community on what can we do to adjust uh, sort of what's coming uh, 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 down through the CRA. And whether you are and in a developer or a business, uh, uh, there is something that you can help with. Uh, connecting us with your public affairs uh, departments, as well as uh, sort of 
starting a campaign yourself as an individual developer. Um, Mirko is going to host, well, you're going to get an update later today, uh, but Mirko is going to host uh, a panel also throughout the week. We continue to try and educate every constituent on what's the impact of the CRA. Um, maybe I should keep doing this here. Um, and in terms of education, uh, we will be releasing a report specifically for uh, uh, the public sector. Uh, I want to thank everyone who participated this year. There's some really, really good insights on how uh, the public sector sees opportunities and challenges for open source. Uh, we will continue investing, I think, in this area because it's an area that has potential, but it's still not sort of delivering all the value that uh, I think we, we can all collectively get here. Um, I have a couple more quick announcements. I see you. I need two minutes. Um, I think one of the disconnects when it comes to the CRA is nailing the difference between open source and open governance. We'll talk about it a lot throughout the year, but throughout this conference. But um, one of the values that foundations like us bring to the table is making sure that no single entity has control or the full copyright of a single project. Um, and that's where the European Union, I think, is having some issues in sort of uh, uh, dividing sort of open source versus projects that shouldn't have liabilities when it comes to foundations uh, because they're truly openly governed. And that brings me to another preview, which we are going to talk about today. Um, how many of you has heard, have heard about the ASHICorp license change? Okay, I think quite a, so I'm not gonna spend any time on it, but keep this confidential until Wednesday, but uh, OpenTF, formerly OpenTF, now OpenTofu, uh, for those of you especially vegetarian, I, I'm a big pork eater, but um, it's gonna join the Linux Foundation. We're gonna announce that on Wednesday. Going back to the idea of open governance, making sure that uh, um, there's no single entity. And again, I want to be clear here, this is not religious. What HashiCorp did is absolutely in their prerogative. They are a commercial organization and, you know, they had the full copyright and so they're, you know, absolutely, um, it's in their prerogative to change. But as a consumer, you need to know that in sort of your risk management practices, you want to consider uh, and you want to have optionality whether to go with a sort of single backed project versus uh, an actually openly governed project. And so we think that OpenTofu, and we're really excited to, to be recognized as a place where um, open governance can, can be implemented on this type of projects. Now, I would be remiss, I'm going to, they're going to kill me here, but I would be remiss if we didn't talk about AI. Um, how many of you have seen the, the We Have No Moat paper or leak from Google? Well, long story short, there's been a Google paper that talked about how open source AI is quickly catching up on uh, uh, you know, open AI and Google. And so, again, this is confidential until Wednesday. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of growth on the uh, LFAI and data effort. Later today, we're going to have Ibrahim Haddad, planes allowing, uh, <laughs> um, in an interesting panel on AI. Uh, but we are launching a new effort called Generative AI Commons under LFAI and data, which starts with uh, four work streams, including starting to host uh, uh, generative models uh, uh, in the Linux Foundation. This is our first effort up until now. We, we have tools like PyTorch or MLflow. Uh, we are now uh, moving into also hosting uh, foundational models, and that's something that I think uh, has a lot of potential for DLF and in Europe. Um, contextually, we're going to have our first uh, uh, foundational model. Uh, um, hosted and announced uh, later in the week. I'm not going to venture uh, into all those amazing and cool buzzwords because it's way beyond my understanding of OAI. I'm going to be very honest for you, uh, with you, but uh, I'm certainly very excited to see. We, there's been a lot of folks asking how uh, the Linux Foundation is going to support truly open source AI. 
Um, we're launching a study later in the week. Um, I want to send a shout out. I don't know if Stefano is here, uh, the executive director of the, the OSI, but there's been a lot of talk of, you know, especially if you think about open AI, what actually is open source AI? Um, the OSI is running an initiative uh, to define exactly that. Uh, you know, how is it different from the definition of open source that they already maintain? So uh, we're going to hear from Stefano and the rest of the panel later today. So I'm going to close. <laughs> only 30% of my time uh, over. Um, if it, I was going to say, I want to make an ask for you today. In the end, it's, it's actually five asks. <laughs> but my hope is that today you learn more about what LF Europe does and what we can do for you, that you give us feedback. Please be vocal. I'm, I'm sure you will. Uh, but I, I'm exhorting you to be vocal and let us know. Socialize with each other. I think this. This uh, um, venue is about also building coalitions that we can sort of start open source projects together on. Um, of course, listen. Um, I got to do a better job at that. And, and I really talk a lot. And sometimes uh, uh, I don't listen enough. And then finally, again, the hope is that you can connect with Mirko, who works uh, for our uh, 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 sort of growing our projects to find high-impact projects that we can host in uh, Linux Foundation Europe. Last but not least, go meet our project table, so I'm going to send a shout out to them. And with that, thank you so much. Sorry for rushing it. <laughs> so much, though. <laughs>